The land was lit by the candle of Mustafa. The earth was enriched by the petals of Zahra. The youths of heaven awaited their mother in a world that misunderstood her essence and her very nature. Her followers gather and call, Who is Fatima? Who is Fatima? Have you ever wondered about the life and personality of Sayyidah Fatima alayhi salam. Who was she? What can we learn from her? And how did the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam treat her? Find out as we take a look at Fatima through the eyes of her father. So who was Sayyidah Fatima? And I quickly and without any hesitation come to say, I don't know. Who has known Sayyidah Fatima? Her capacity, her competence, her level, her proximity to Allah glorified and exalted. How can I dare ask, answer who was Sayyidah Fatima? She is um, a spiritual universe in herself because her natural disposition was the embodiment of the characteristics of Sayyidina Muhammad Barak Ali. In other words, she was the pure reflection of her father, Sayyidina Muhammad alayhi salatu wa sallam. The, the message that needs to be spread is, is to first know what she actually is. Um, you know, really having a good understanding of what she's doing and what she, what was her purpose in her life? What was she trying to achieve and what did she actually achieve um, beside helping her father or her husband or you know educating her children what did she contribute to 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 to, to the muslim community she is known to be the lady of light lady of light why because one of her names is az zahra and az zahra means the shining light narrations point to the idea that when she stands before allah in prayers her light would be illuminating the heavens as much as the stars and the moon would be illuminating the earth. Man Fatima, Qul man abuha, man umuha, wa man zojituha, wa man uladaha. If you want to know who is Fatima, then ask who is her father. Her father is Sayyidina Muhammad alayhi salatu wa salam, aladhi sharafa nas bi wujudi, the one who um, honored existence with his presence. And who is uh, Khadija? Khadija is the mother of Sayyidah, Sayyidah Fatima. So she is given this, this uh, you have the father who is the Sayyid of, of all the prophets. And you have Khadija who is uh, the best of women of her time. And who is her husband? Sayyidina Ali is her husband. Man Sayyidina Ali. We cannot write down who Sayyidina Ali is. And when you say this is Fatima, no imam from any school of thought can come today and say this is the rank of Fatima because you can't. Lady Fatima to Zahra alayhi salam is the lady of light because of her great attributes, because of her significant, very important contributions towards the religion of Islam, thereby spreading the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Henry Corbin talks about um, Shia Islam being an uh, apophatic theology, meaning to understand God, you must negate God from all limitations, from all names, from all states of existence and non-existence. And therefore, God can only be described in negative terms. So, for example, you say God is not this, God is not that. And therefore, that leaves us with one option, and that is to understand God through his manifestations. And God's manifestations on earth are none other than the 14 infallibles, who are the perfect manifestations. In the case of the Imams, Henry Corbin described them as humanity or divinity humanized. In the case of Sayyidah Zahra alayhi salam, she's divinity feminized. So for me, that's who Fatima al-Zahra was. She was this feminine beauty, this glorious object of devotion, this glorious object of light. Everything can be sacrificed for Islam. Nothing is more important 
and the gold of Allah glorified and exalted. The teachings of Islam, their survival, their promotion is what Fatima to Zahra sallallahu lived for. And many other narrations exist about her position, about why she was named Fatima. And according to a narration from the Holy Prophet of Islam, sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, she is named Fatima and Fatima means to wean, to protect something. And the Holy Prophet says it is because her lovers, her followers will be protected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the hellfire. The word Fatima uh, is from the word Fatama, which means to wean. In other words, if you were to attach yourself to Lady Fatima salam, she will help you to wean from this world. Meaning that all the glitter and all the glamour that we see uh, that distracts us from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if we were to attach ourselves with Lady Fatima, she will assist us or wean us from this world. It is baffling even to try and understand the life of Baby Fatima to Zahra alayhi salam, how a human being could live like that. Hence, one begins to understand what the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him and his progeny, said, and what he meant when he said that Fatima is a Huril in Siyah. She belongs to the strata of the heavens. This is where she truly belongs and has been sent to the earth as a gift to humanity. She, for example, it is narrated that um, when her mother, Lady Khadija, peace be upon her, was pregnant with her and when she went into labor, um, none of the Arab women wished to attend Khadija's uh, uh, labor session. Uh, she was boycotted by the Arab women simply because of her association with Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So what happened was Khadija went into labor by herself only to find out that four midwives sent from the heavens were also present. And we know according to traditions, of course, the traditions name four people and as they're not always consistent, but according to most traditions, the midwives that were present by Khadija's uh, labor session were none other than Sarah, the wife of Prophet Abraham, uh, Safura, she was the daughter of Nabi Shu'aib, and also the wife of Prophet Moses, um, Miriam, uh, Mary, the mother of Jesus, and the last person would be Asia, the righteous wife of Pharaoh. So as you can see from the very beginning of her birth, Fatima was surrounded by a very uh, blessed uh, circumstances. When Lady Khadija was pregnant with, uh, with, with uh, Lady Fatima, -Islam, they used to have a communication, literally communication, not by movement, by actually haki, they actually haki, like speak. And one Satan Muhammad came in and he said to uh, Khadija, who are you talking to? And she said, uh, uh, the one who's in me, like you know, in my batani. And he said, uh, I give you good news. She will be the leader of the women of Jannah. So Satan Muhammad already <laughs> knew about uh, the rank of uh, Fatima before she was even born. If the question is, is, is to be examined on a small level, at, on, on a plain level, then of course she was the beloved daughter of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him and his progeny. But she was more than that. She was beloved of Allah, glorified and exalted. So if she is beloved of Allah, glorified and exalted, one can see the level at which she was. And now you can forgive me for saying, I cannot say who Fatima to Zahra alayhi was or is, because I truly do not know. Many great beings have unfortunately tasted death at young ages. But did this light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on earth, this entity who embodied the pleasure of Allah, hold an important role? The question is, what part of life do you want to take from her? You want to take her as a sheikha? You can take a sheikha. You want to take a fatwa from her? You can take a fatwa from her. You want to see how to be a mother? Look at uh, Fatima Zahra. You want to see how you should be as, as a wife? Look at Fatima. You want to see how you are in the community? Look at Fatima. How you should dress? is Look at Fatima. She is important to answer the question in one sentence first. She is important because if she is not there in our Islam, we are not in Islam. Without her, that's one of those questions, um, how, would, how would the earth be without Allah? Ch verse 33, in chapter 33, which says, 
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنما يريد الله ليذهب أنكم الرجس أهل البيت ويطهركم تطهيرا that it is the will of Allah it is the intention of Allah to purify you ليذهب أنكم الرجس to clean you of all impurities O أهل البيت and purify you as you deserve to be to, to be puri, to be purified well the question of course immediately that arises is who is ahlul bayt and this question was asked to the holy prophet peace be upon him and his progeny a number of times and his answer on all occasions as reported in all tafasir of any of any significance of any importance in in islam and tafasir from all sections of Islam, be they from Ahl al-Sunnah wal Jama'a, or be they from the Shia commentators, they all say that the Holy Prophet identified the five as Hum Fatima wa Abiha wa Ba'liha wa Baniha. Fatima Zara is the head of the Ahli Bayt, which means all the sources of, of Uloom and uh, spirituality comes from Fatima. And if there's no Fatima, there's no Ahli Bayt. Mainly because she is the daughter of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and because she was so close to him that he said, um, Fatima Bidduktun Minni, she is a part of me. And the way that she was with her father, like I know the story of when um, he had rubbish thrown onto him and it was her that came through the crowd to take it off. And because she was so near to him and as women, we need somebody to look to. Um, because we need to follow the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and in a sense she is our stepping stone towards that and in turn he is our stepping stone towards Allah. The Prophet needed someone to be next to him to help him out in certain tasks. Not that he couldn't do that but because you know, he needed some help to help him promote Islam. In the same way um, I believe um, Imam Ali needed someone. One tradition Imam al-Askari, uh, peace be upon him, said, we, the Imams, are the signs of God unto you. But she is the sign of God unto us. So for the Imams, she is the proof of God. To determine, to ascertain the existence of a God, a deity, then they look at Fatima al-Zahra. Sayyidina Muhammad Barakale, he gave an analogy. The analogy is that this Ummah is like a jism, like a body. The body has to have a heart. A body has to have a ruh. The body of this, uh, yani the ummah, this ummah here, has a heart. And the heart is who? Sayyidina Fatima. She is the heart of this ummah. If you take away the heart, there's no kima. There's no value for this body. Islam was saved. It was saved by the sacrifices made by her illustrious mother, by herself and by her sons, particularly the sacrifice made by Imam Hussain alayhi salam, saved Islam altogether. Would Islam be in existence today if Fatima to Zahra alayhi salam did not exist? What would have happened? Let us pause for a second to think. That if you take away the whole idea of Fatima and the early bait from this Ummah, the Ummah is going to die. It's going to die, spiritually die. Okay, And you can do your five nafils and your Quran khatams and so on, but bidun ruh, ma faida. There's no faida here. Follow her in order to become beloved as well and beloved by Allah in turn. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this chapter to say that the line of the Prophet, the progeny of the Prophet, shall go through Lady Fatima to Zahra sallallahu alayhi And therefore, she is Al Kothar. She is the abundant greatness. She is the great news that the Holy Prophet was given. It is a bold statement to make, but I will say it nonetheless. There would be no Islam without Fatima al Zahra. Spiritually speaking, philosophically speaking, we know that the gravity of the universe, the gravity of the physical reality, revolves around the axis of the 14 infallibles. And we know, according to traditions attributed to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him and his family, who famously said, Allah said to me, O oh, Ahmad, if it wasn't for you, Ahmad was his, the other name of the Prophet that was often used. Or said, Oh Muhammad, or Oh Ahmed, if it wasn't for you, I would not have created Ali. And if it wasn't for Ali, I would not have created the universe. And if it wasn't for Fatima, I would not have created either of you. So the very existential reason, the very existential cause why we exist, why the universe is in place, why galaxies revolve around stars, is because of Fatima al Zahra. 
the Holy Prophet وسلم's mission was always an uphill struggle, consistently dealing with opposition from all sides. Did the presence of Sayyidah Fatima alayhi salam truly make a difference to Islam? Who is the mother of this Ummah? So when you cut yourself from the Ummah, the source or the mother itself, don't expect any khair. Don't expect any barakah. It makes no difference who you are, where you are. She still is your mother. And this is our duty to our mother. One thing we should at least do is read about her, to honor her, how she was, and then to implement what she was into your own lives. It's not enough just to have fairy tale stories, but to take that on board and implement that in your daily lives, teaching that to your sons and teaching that to your own to your mothers and to your daughters. The question is, would Islam be different without her? My answer is, maybe Islam would not exist without her. And I say this because Allah does not create in vain. If Allah created Fatima to Zahra alayha, in the perfect nature that she has, then her existence was prerequisite to success of Islam. Generally speaking, um, I would say that most people do not know much about her. Um, and in fact, I, I can even go further down and say most, most Muslims do not know much about her. Um, I mean, I, re I remember, for example, not when I used to be um, in, the, in the Sunni faith, um, I actually never heard about Fatima. I, was, I wasn't taught anything about her. So it was mainly the Prophet, the Prophet, the Prophet. And when I really wanted to wear hijab, but was finding it quite difficult, one of the things that pulled me through that was remembering um, Fatima Zahra, radiallahu ta'ala anha, because I got to a stage when I almost felt as if I was, if I were to stand before her, that I would be ashamed because she was the daughter of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and you know, she did these things and she cared so much about the hijab and she cared about her um, hijab even when she, after she died, she was worried about how she would appear in her funeral. And so it really humbles you and it makes you feel that if, if she had that much concern then how can we just flagrantly ignore the hijab and say it doesn't matter? Once I reverted, I learned a few things about Imam Ali and wondering who he got married to and, you know, ended up finding Fatima Zahra alayhi salam. So, for example, if we start with the typical stereotype that's leveled against Muslims today, you know, Muslim or Islam is a religion that oppresses women, then we find in the person of Sayyidah, Zainab, uh, Sayyidah Zahra alayhi salam someone who championed women's rights from a very young early age. Don't forget, she was born into a society that was, you know, a society that was male dominant, a society that looked at women, a society that degraded women, a society that stripped women from their rights, a society that saw women as objects. There was absolutely no respect for women. It was through Sayyidah Zahra and through her father's teachings that the rights of women were championed. And this was championed by a very young girl. Such being the personality of uh, Sayyidah Fatima alayhi salam, a question can hardly arise as to what can we learn from her. What can arise is just the opposite question, which is easier one to answer. What can we not learn from her? And my instant answer is there is nothing we cannot learn from Bibi Fatima. And Fatima Zahra, peace be upon her, did the same thing. I mean, how, we, it's unheard of for an Arab woman to stand up in a male-dominated audience and challenge them. Not only challenge them, but teach them, to instruct them, to give them guidelines. And more importantly, it was done in the most articulate expressions of Arabic, Arabic linguistics. And this itself is what really excited some of the Arabs at the time, because they were the masters of languages. They were people who loved good expression. They were people who enjoyed a, you know, good prose and good poetry. And Fatima al Zahra offered them that very thing. You know, she mastered the language. And, and that's why, you know, there's one one can say, there are a lot of comparisons that could be made between her and, 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 and Mary, peace be upon her. Both lived in a society that was male-dominated, 
both challenge the status quo in a positive way, both um, uh, promoted and advanced the status of women, both championed the cause of women's rights in their society, and both of them gave birth to people, to two men, who sacrificed the very family, the very flesh, for the benefit of humanity. So, what is there that one cannot learn from Fatima salam? Her etiquette, her veracity, her, her, her truthfulness to the extent that she becomes a Siddiqa, her, her, her charities. There is, there is no virtue that you do not see in, in, in Fatima alayhi salam. I would say, if you want to learn any virtue, learn it from Fatima alayhi salam. If you want to learn the art of worship, learn it from Fatima alayhi salam. If there is any virtue you want to learn, you will find that virtue in Fatima alayhi salam. With so many narratives of different honorary individuals, what can we say about the life of Fatima alayhi salam? Who did she affect? Who did she help? What impact has Sayyidah Fatima alayhi salam made to the world? She was known for her spirituality. She was known for her devotion towards Allah, the connection towards the only beloved. She would stand in the night worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the extent that her son Imam al-Hasan alayhi salam would say that I would say, I would see that her feet were swollen due to her standing before her Lord. And she, importantly, would be praying for others before herself. She would be praying for the welfare of the community, for the welfare of society, before mentioning herself or her own family. And Imam al Hassan would ask her, Oh my dear mother, why are you not praying for us? And the answer would come, Ya Bunay al-Jar thumma dar Oh my son, neighbors comes first, then the house itself. Now imagine if this particular statement was taken on board by all the different interfaith groups of today, especially in a multicultural society, especially, you know, we, we are told that we live in a global village of, of diversity and, and, and multiplicity. Now imagine people actually took that message on board and started treating their neighbor better than they treated themselves. That would itself promote not only community cohesion, but would promote global cohesion. That itself could be a solution for, for many of the for all the conflicts worldwide and the regional conflicts, worldly conflicts. So that for me is, is the most um, uh, important example, important message that I can derive from the life of um, Sayyid al-Zahra alayhi salam, putting others before her. Um, I think the thing that's affected me most um, is when I read about her wedding. Um, and the fact that her wedding, it was, it was very, very beautiful, but at the same time, it was very simple. Um, but in the heavens, it's still being celebrated today. Um, but in this world, it was very beautiful. She came with two very simple garments and two saffron-coloured silver bracelets. Um, she stumbled in her clothes a little bit. When the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam asked her to fetch water, she stumbled out of shyness. Um, figs and, and grapes were bought for them, dried grapes and figs. And they had um, haze, which a mi was a mixture of dates and clarified butter. And they had corn and barley. So the foods were all very wholesome and simple. The clothing was very simple. And it was just that, that kind of innocence and simplicity and shyness that I think has been lost in the world today. Which the Christians have come to the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him and his progeny. And they, they, they are not able to be convinced that Nabi Isa alayhi salam was not a son of Allah, he was a prophet of Allah. And all the arguments took place and Allah even sent down the verse says, Mathalu Isa in the law kabathalu adam khalakahu min turabin thumma qala lahu kun fayakun. The similitude of Isa in the, in, the, in the eyes of Allah glorified and exalted is like that of Adam. He was created from earth and was told be and he became. If Adam could be born without a mother or a father, well, what is the problem about Allah being able to create Isa without a father? Yet they were not convinced that eye of the Tahir was, was, that eye of Mubahila was revealed. That if they still, after all these arguments, are not able to be convinced, then ask them to bring, to bring their, their children 
and we will bring our children and they should bring their selves and we will bring ourselves and they should bring their ladies and we will bring our ladies thumma nabta hill and then we they, we have a mubahala we seek the decision of allah glorified and exalted wa naj'al la'natullahi 'ala al-kadhibin and we seek the curse of allah to fall on those who are liars well the first question therefore that arises is who are to constitute these abna'ana wa abna'akum wa nisa'ana wa nisa'akum wa anfusana wa anfusakum thumma nabtahir and so the holy prophet uh, took with him uh, in order to stand in, in front of these group of people who have come to challenge him uh, his daughter lady fatima alayhi uh, salam imam ali alayhi salam as well as hassan and hussein uh, his sons and so when he took them uh, together uh, the holy verse was revealed that talks about Lady Fatima being the woman folk of the Holy Prophet, describing her in the plural to demonstrate her significance. Um, and so the verse uh, talks about Nisa, uh, Nisa Ana wa Nisa Akum, our woman folk and your woman folk. And the majority of historical references point to the fact that only Lady Fatima alayhi salam uh, accompanied the Holy Prophet towards the area whereby the malediction was just about to happen. That may the curse of Allah fall on those who lie, which implies that those who are going to ask for that curse to fall on, 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 on the liars have got to be people who are pure themselves, who have never lied in their lives. And I say with all confidence, can anyone point out at one lie that Fatima Zahra ever spoke, whether in her last days or even in her childhood? Between this well-spoken, pure-spirited individual and wise statesman, between this angelic being and such a humble worshipper, between this heavenly daughter and noble, kind father, what relationship? What bond was made? Was it of this abode or of another? The Holy Prophet of Islam knew her position in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Indeed, he respected her and loved her because she was his daughter. Yet, he understood and fully acknowledged what position she enjoyed in the religion of Islam to the extent that she is the greatest of all women, Sayyidatun Nisa'il Alameen. And the Holy Prophet would continuously um, be meeting her the first when he comes back from a journey, from a battle. The first person who he'd meet is Lady Fatima. According to Aisha, he would kiss her, kiss her um, on, on the neck. Aisha one day asks the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him and his progeny, saying, why do you do this? And he turns around and says, when I miss uh, uh, paradise, and every time I come from, this, from a journey and I am tired, I miss the peace of paradise, I kiss the neck of Fatima alayhi salam because in, 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 in the neck of Fatima alayhi salam there is the perfume of paradise. And when he's just about to set off, the last individual he would bid farewell to would be Lady Fatima to Zahra. He would stand up in full respect when she is attending. Uh, in his presence. When he uh, was to go to her house, he would knock on the door of Lady Fatima. And Lady Fatima would say, who is behind the door? And he would reply, it is me, your father. She would say, oh my father, this is your house. You do not need to take permission. He says, no, I, this is, I want to take permission from you and all the occupants of this house before I enter. Indeed, a level a level at which the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him and his progeny, stands up as she enters. Is that a small level? And it is clear that the Holy Prophet, and I wish to say this at the very beginning, the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him and his progeny, did not stand up because she was welcoming a daughter. No father has done it. No father after him has done it. He has not done it for other, for other daughters either. Nor has it become a sunnah. The action of the Holy Prophet becomes a sunnah. There was no requirement for the Ummah to follow that. 
for, to follow that example because it was not an example to be followed for every daughter. It was an example for Fatima to Zahra Salamullahi Alaiha. She was submissive. She was loyal. She was respectful. And she, more importantly, she never um, used her lineage to her advantage in, in terms of looking down at other people. She never had this smuggish attitude. She was someone who was very, very humble. She, she expressed uh, extreme forms of humility at times that never on earth people would think this is the daughter of arguably the greatest, you know, uh, the greatest man to walk set foot on, on earth. In the time of Makkan period, so when all the Quraysh were uh, making fun of the Rasul from Barak Ali, when Sayyidina Muhammad Barak Ali went into Sajda and the Abu Lahab and his heavyweights uh, started to throw things uh, on the Rasul Mubarak Ali. Sayyidina Muhammad Huna, he was in Sajda. This is, he is a Sahab of Sajda. He is the master of the Sujuds, Sayyidina Muhammad Mubarak Ali. And who pushed everyone out the way? It was Lady Fatima who came and she pushed everyone out the way because she wasn't afraid. And she's only like a little girl. And she just came and she pushed everyone out the way and she lifted the filth from her noble father. What do you think she received for that? Therefore, we find in uh, many books of narration, such as Imam al-Bukhari's compilation of hadith, Sahih al-Bukhari, that he narrates that the Holy Prophet of Islam, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, said, Fatima tu bidhatun minni, that Fatima is part of me. فَمَنْ أَغْضَبَهَا أَغْضَبَنِي Whomsoever hurts her, whomsoever angers her, has angered Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. And of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Qur'an says, whomsoever angers the Holy Prophet has angered Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, uh, therefore we understand from this particular uh, narration that the position enjoyed by the Holy Lady was such that her pleasure was the pleasure of Allah and her displeasure, her unhappiness with the unhappiness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To Sayyidina Rasul alayhi salatu wa sallam, and she was still holding back. But Arafah of Sayyidina Muhammad barik he knew what she wanted. But, she, but he gave her more than what she came for, you see, because, and that shows, that shows Sayyidina Muhammad barik because Sayyidina Muhammad was not abusing his position as a prophet. Because, okay, here's my daughter, she wants a maid, I can give you ten maids. But he said, La, I'll give you better than that, Ya Fatima. Was something that Lady Fatima to Zahra would constantly utter, would constantly remember. And she was the first who actually uh, made these beads, these tasbih, um, after the martyrdom of the Prophet's uncle Hamza. She made it from the uh, dust or the clay from around his, close to his grave. And she used to use that as far as the tasbih and the glorification of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is concerned. When we see the love that this heavenly being had for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, and her dear husband Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam, we wonder how this love must have marked her very actions. What can we say about the character of this devout being? What can we say about Sayyidina Fatima alayhi salam? What is difficult to determine is what did the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him and his progeny, say for Fatima to Zahra alayhi salam? Because the question that would be easier to deal with is, what did he not say? And we would be able immediately to say there is nothing of virtues that he did not say of Fatima to Zahra alayhi salam. The most important thing about Sayyidina Zahra's character, um, in my humble opinion, was her humility and her modesty. And to demonstrate this, I'll use one famous story where the Prophet was in the company, in his house, he was in the company of a blind man, Abdullah ibn Maktoum. And we are told that when Fatima was made aware of this man's presence, remember this, this man was blind, she put on her veil and, and put on her full hijab. After the man departed from the house, the Prophet inquired and he said, you know, you didn't, you know, this man was blind. Why, why did you put on your veil? He could not see you. Her reply was astounding. And, 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 and for me, um, best captures her modesty and her humility. Her reply was, he could not see me, but I could see him. When I, he when I hear or read about 
how she behaved with, with her with her with her slave maid um, Filza, for example. It was just amazing. I, I seen she was her slave, but the way she treated her, it was just like wow, you know that that's that's even more than friendship. Because it was saying, for example, that they divided a day, and one day, Sayyid Fatma was, was looking after everything, as in um, the children and house chores, and the other, she was she would have a break, and it would be the other, the other um, I mean, Sayyid so Fatma's turn, you know. E even in, to this date, someone who is employing a cleaner, I'm sure wouldn't do that. But when one looks at the life of Ibn Fatima, one finds that what comes out as one of the most important features of her life is her truthfulness. Siddiqa, she is called. No, she's called Siddiqa al Kubra. For example, she was known for serving the poor. She was known for serving the poor. She was known for giving her time to the Quran. She was known for giving time for education. She was known for giving time to her children and to her husband. So. If you were to tap into her timetable, you will see that her heart was attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continuously 24-7, but she was still doing her chores as a mother. Producing Sayyidina Hassan, Sayyidina Hussein is not easy. Okay? So when she was suckling Sayyidina Hassan, what do you think they're receiving? What do you think Imam Hussein and Imam Hassan are receiving? And then having a husband like Sayyidina Ali, can you imagine the atmosphere in that house. A holy lady, of course, were not, was known for her uh, ibadah and devotion. And this particular story demonstrates it, whereby one day uh, the holy imam comes to the house and asks Lady Fatima for some food. And Fatima to Zahra replies back saying that for the last two days our food has completely finished and we have no more food. He asks her why she didn't inform him of the need to bring more food and he, she replied saying that my father, the Holy Prophet, told me I should never put you in a discomforting position. I should never ask you something that you may not be able to uh, answer or, or satisfy. He immediately left the house to try and gather or get some food. He took a loan of one dinar narrations say one dinar and he was heading to the market to buy some food for his own family when he saw Maqdad, the famous companion Maqdad, who is distracted by something, who isn't his usual self. He never replied back to Imam Salam, or he did very quickly. And Imam Ali salam asked him, Oh Maqdad, what is it that's occupying your mind? And he said, uh, Oh Ali, my family is very hungry and I have no food for them. And I've gone out to try and seek some means of fighting, finding some provision. Imam Ali salam gives him that one dinar that he had taken as a loan and says to him, go and buy some food. Maqdad said, but this is for you. This is for you to go and find your food uh, for your own family. He said, don't worry about me. Go and satisfy the hunger of your own family. It was time for prayers. Imam Ali salam goes to pray behind Rasulullah. When the prayers end, the Holy Prophet informs him that I wish to have my meal or my dinner with you tonight in your house. Amir al-Mu'mineen asks him to come with him. He is welcoming. They go to the house. As soon as Lady Fatima alayhi salam sees that her father Rasulullah had come with her husband Imam Ali alayhi salam for some food, she goes to where she normally prepares the meal and she raises her hands towards the sky. Notice her great position in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She says, Oh Allah, O oh the one who gave or set down some meal from the heavens towards Bani Israel, do say the same for me or for my family. Grant us some meal. And as soon as narration says, as soon as she uh, um, finished her supplication, she could see a large bowl of food that had been uh, sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through angel Jibra'il and she bought this food and presented it before the Holy Prophet and Amir al-Mu'mineen. When Amir al-Mu'mineen inquired where this came from, the Holy Prophet looked at him and said, O oh Ali, this is a small recompense from Allah for that sacrifice of one dinar that you gave to Maqdad. If you look in the, some of the hadith books, be it in the Shia world or, or in the Sunni literature of hadith, um, you'll find chapters devoted to the character or, or, or the person of Fatima al-Zahra, uh, be it descriptions, 
by other companions on her personality or her moral conduct or be a traditions uh, uh, said about her by her father, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him and his family. I suppose the most famous and, and most prevalent tradition in today's society that's said of Fatima al-Zahra or about Fatima al-Zahra is that she is part of the Prophet. Uh, Allah glorified and, is, and exalted is Subuhun Quddus. He is Quddus, that is his virtue. For him to be prepared to, 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 to receive and accept and implement the pleasure of Fatima alayhi salam implies unquestionably that the pleasure of, of Fatima alayhi salam would not by even an iota be anything contrary or lesser than the pleasure of Allah glorified and exalted. And for her to attain that level of understanding of where and wherein lies the pleasure of Allah glorified and exalted shows how much she knew Allah glorified and exalted and knew where the pleasure of Allah glorified and exalted lay. And hence, hence, it is so important to appreciate that in everything Fatima alayhi salam did, whether she was claiming fadak, whether she was talking about salah, whether she was talking to the ladies of Medina, whatever she was doing, it was within the pleasure of Allah. What she was doing was what would be the pleasure of Allah. That is the level at which Fatima alayhi salam flew. We've heard so many narrations and so many quotes of the Prophet being um, attacked, um, sometimes in a physical way, sometimes getting th things thrown at him while he was praying or on the way and because unfortunately he didn't have a mother so um, he used to go home and Fatima used to look after him um, hence um, he called her Umm Abiha. In the way she walked, in the way she spoke, in the way she, in the way she sat, the way she pointed was like this. Why would she point like this? Because she saw her father point like this. The way she used to sleep is the same manner that, she, that her father would sleep. So when you study the Shemail, which is, a, which is uh, the characteristics of Sayyidina Hambarik Ali, you read it page by page, and then you scan into the life of Lady Fatima, and you find nothing missing, because she was living the Sunnah of the Rasul Ali. Allah glorified and exalted had to provide for the for women, and Fatima to Zahra alayhi salam is a role example for women. But is she? She of course is. She of course is, but is that all that she is? She is as much a role model for, for men. Her truthfulness, her veracity, her etiquette, her courtesy, her, 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 her worship of Allah glorified and exalted. Indeed, there are hadith historically which say that when Fatima alayhi salam would stand on her prayer mat, a nur, light would come out from the house of Fatima to Zahra alayhi salam and people would know that, that uh, Fatima alayhi salam is in the worship of Allah, glorified and exalted. With words that could fill a thousand books, not being able to even describe an atom of her true meaning, what words from her father, the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, could truly describe this pure lady, Sayyidah Fatima alayhi salam. The school of Ahl al-Bayt, as well as the school of Ahl al-Sunnah, uh, have come forward with narrations from the uh, Ahl al-Sunnah wal Jama'ah. 34 different books of narrations have verified this particular incident where the household of Ali and Fatima, which included Imam al Hassan al Hussein, decided to observe the fast for three consecutive days. And when they were just about to break their fast for the first day using the bread that they had prepared, the knock on the door is heard and when they open the door they find that it is a miskeen, a poor, a destitute person who came who said to them, O Ahlul Bayt of the Prophet, I am a miskeen, I am a poor, give me some food. So what they did was they picked up the entire piece of loaf that they had and they gave it to this needy individual without even halving it. In other words, they wanted the welfare and the well-being of other human beings over themselves. And this is what altruism, or in the Arabic is known as ethar, is actually meant. 
and the next day as the Quran talks about it uh, the orphan comes in and knocks on the door at the time of iftar when they are just about to break their fast on the second day and of course uh, when they did the same thing they started to um, feel the hunger they had broken their fast the night before using water alone and they did the same on the second day on the final day a captive, an asir, comes and knocks on the door and they also do the same thing. For three consecutive days they give their entire iftar, they give the entire food that they would use to break their fast to a poor, destitute, need, uh, a needy person, uh, to a uh, orphan as well as a captive. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals these beautiful verses in the Quran praising their act of sacrifice and altruism. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa yut'imoon al-ta'ama ala hubbihi miskinan wa yatiman wa asira. They give their food due to the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to a needy, to a orphan and to a captive. Innama nut'imukum li wajhillah la nuridu minkum jaza'an wa la shukura. We give you this food because of our love for Allah that the Prophet is attributed to have said, Fatima is part of me, whoever hurts her, or whoever angers her, angers me, or whoever hurts her, hurts me. This it, it, it's, itself needs careful an, uh, analysis and, and careful examination. Indeed, even Bukhari reports this hadith, reports that hadith of, of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him and his progeny, in which he says, Fatima bid'atum minni, man adaha fakad adhani. Fatima is part of me. Strong words of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him and his progeny, unanimously reported by all reporters. Well, if she is part of, of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him and his progeny, she is part of Risala. She is part of, of that great task that Allah glorified and exalted, passed on to the Holy Prophet. Maybe there's this narration I heard that um I, th I think it's the hadith, hadith in the Qudsi um, from Allah and he was saying that he was saying to the Prophet, telling the Prophet that O oh, Prophet, without you, I wouldn't have created the universe and without Ali, I wouldn't have created you and then he ends up by saying that without Fatima, I would have created both of you So the very existential reason, the very existential cause why we exist, why the universe is in place, why galaxies revolve around stars, is because of Fatima al Zahra. At the same time, we find that the Holy Prophet says that there are four great women in history. One is Lady Khadija bint Khuwailid, the other is Asiya, the wife of Pharaoh, uh, the third is Maryam bint Imran, the mother of Prophet Isa, salam. and the fourth is Lady Fatima bint Muhammad. But at the same time, we look at uh, Masnad Ahmad ibn Hanbal and he narrates a very interesting story where he says that the Prophet of Islam once was walking in the streets of Medina and he, in an alleyway, he was seen to stop and some of his companions noticed from far that he was stopped for a few moments. They came to him afterwards and said, Ya Rasulullah, what had happened? He said that at this moment, an angel of Allah that had not descended to me before and shall never do so after has come to me with the good tidings, the great news that my daughter Fatima is Sayyida Tunisa'i Ahlil Jannah is the mistress of the women of paradise and my sons Al Hassan and Hussein are Sayyidai Shababi Ahlil Jannah are the masters of the youth of paradise How she was, because it's not just what so much that she said a lot it's how she was in her whole being, her spiritual being, her, the love that she emanated for her father. Um, I think if that can be passed on to young children and they can be inspired by her example, then it will help them to, to grow up and, and act um, in the way that's appropriate to Muslim women. There's a hadith from the Holy Six Imam, Imam Ja'far ibn Muhammad al Sadiq salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi from the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam in which he says وَأَمَّ بْنَتِي فَاطِمَةِ As for my daughter Fatima فَإِنَّهَا سَيِّدَةُ نِسَاءِ الْعَالَمِينَ She is the mistress of the women of the worlds مِنَ الْأَوَّلِينَ وَالْآخِرِينَ From the beginning of time 
towards the end of time. وَهِيَ بِضْعَةٌ مِّنِّي She is a part of me. وَهِيَ نُورُ عَيْنِي She is the light of my eyes. وَهِيَ ثَمَرَةُ فُؤَادِي She is the fruit of my existence. وَهِيَ رُوحِيَ الَّتِي بَيْنَ جَنْبَيْ She is my spirit, the soul that is between my two sides. وَهِيَ الْحَوْرَاءُ الْإِنْسِيَّ She is the Huri, the human being. مَتَى مَا قَامَتْ فِي مِحْرَابِهَا بَيْنَ يَدَيْ رَبِّهَا زَهَرَ نُورُهَا لِمَلَائِكَةِ السَّمَاءِ Every time she stands before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in her mihrab, her nur illuminates the angels of the heavens. كَمَا يَزْهَرُ نُورُ الْكَوَاكِبِ لِأَهْلِ الْأَرْضِ Just like how the stars and the comets illuminate the skies for the people of this earth. فَيَقُولُ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala thereafter shall say يَا مَلَائِكَتِي O my angels انظروا إلى أمتي فاطمة Look at my servant فاطمة سيدة إمائي She is the mistress of my servants. قائمة بين يدي. She is standing before me. ترتعد فراس فرا فرائسها من خيفتي. Her joints are shaking due to the my position in her eyes. وقد أقبلت بقلبها على عبادتي. She has come forward with her heart completely submissive in my worship. أشهدكم إنني قد أمنت شيعتها من النار. I bear witness in front of you that I have safeguarded her followers, her Shia, from hellfire. There are many traditions uh, that Sayyidina Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam has spoken about Fatima. And one of the narrations is so powerful is that on the day of judgment, al yawm al qiyamah, I'll be there and everyone's going to be there. We're all going to be there. And we're going to hear a voice. And this voice will say to us, lower your gaze, Fatima is going to Jannah. But if I continued only to speak on details, maybe the whole program would be consumed only in, 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 in seeking to answer that question. In worldly terms, of course, she was the beloved daughter of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him and his progeny. In reality, she is, if I may say so, undescribable.